Curious George Flies a Kite Written by Margaret Ray Pictures by H.A. Ray Narrated by me This is George. He lives in the house of the man with the yellow hat. George is a little monkey, and all monkeys are curious, but no monkey is as curious as George. That is why his name is Curious George. I have to go out now, said the man with the yellow hat. Be a good little monkey till I come back. Have fun and play with your new ball, but do not be too curious. And the man went out. It was a lot of fun for George to play with his big new ball. The ball went up, and George went up. And the ball went down, and George went down. George could do a lot of tricks with his ball, too. This was one of the tricks. He could get up on the ball like this. Or do it this way, with his head down. This was another trick George could do. He could hold the ball on his head, like this. Look, no hands. What a good trick. But, but where did the ball go? George ran after it. The ball had gone into another room. There was a big window in the room. George liked to look out of that window. He could see a lot from there. He let the ball go and looked out. George could see Bill on his bike and the lake with a boat on it. George could see a big house and a little garden, and a little house and a big garden. The big house was the house where Bill lived. But who lived in the little house? George was curious. Who could live in a house that was so little? George had to find out, so he went to the big garden. The garden had a high wall, but not too high for a monkey. George got up on the wall. And all he had to do now was jump down. So George jumped down into the big garden. Now he could take a good look at the little house. And what did he see? A big white bunny and a lot of little bunnies. George looked and looked and looked. Bunnies were something new to him. How funny they were. The big bunny was Mother Bunny. She was as big as George. But the little bunnies were so little that George could hold one of them in his hand, and that is what he wanted to do. How could he get a bunny out of the house? A house must have a door to get in and to get out. But where was the door to the bunny house? Oh, there it was. George put his hand in and took out a baby bunny. What fun it was to hold a baby bunny, and the bunny did not mind. It sat in his hand, one ear up and one ear down, and looked at George, and George looked back at it. Now he and the bunny would play in the garden. They could play a game. They could play Get the Bunny. George would let the bunny hop away, and then he would run after it and get it back. George put the bunny down. Then he looked away. One, two, run. The bunny was off like a shot. George did not look. Now he had to wait a little. One, two, three, four, he waited. Then George looked up. Where was the bunny? He could not see it. Where was it? Where had it gone? George looked for it here, and he looked for it there. He could not find it. Where was the bunny? It could not get out of the garden. It could not get up the wall the way George could. It could not fly away. It had to be here, but it was not. The bunny was gone, and all the fun was gone too. George sat down. He had been a bad little monkey. Why was he so curious? Why did he let the bunny go? Now he could not put it back into the bunny house where it could be with Mother Bunny. Mother Bunny, George looked up. Why, that was it. Mother Bunny could help him. George got up. He had to have some string. Maybe there was some in the garden. Yes, there was string and a good one too. George took the string and went back to the bunny house. Mother Bunny was at the door. George let her out and put the string on her, and Mother Bunny knew what to do. 
Away she went with her head down and her ears up. All George could do is hold the string and run after her. And then Mother Bunny sat down. She saw something, and George saw it too. Something white that looked like a tail, like the tail of the baby bunny. And that is what it was. But where was the rest of the bunny? It was down in a hole. A bunny likes to dig a hole and then go down and live in it. But this bunny was too little to live in a hole. It should live in a bunny house. So George got hold of the little white tail and pulled the baby bunny out. Then they all ran back to the bunny house. George did not have to put a string on the baby bunny. It ran after its mother all the way home. George took the string off Mother Bunny and helped them back into the house. Then Mother Bunny and all the little ones lay down to sleep. George looked at them. It was good to see the baby bunny back where it should be. And now George would go back to where he should be. When he came to the wall, he could see something funny in back of it. George got up on the wall to find out what it was. He saw a long string on a long stick. A fat man had a long stick in his hand. What could the man do with a stick that long? George was curious. The fat man was on his way to the lake, and soon George was on his way to the lake too. The man took a hook out of his box, put it on a string, and then put something on the hook. Then the man let the string down into the water and waited. Now George knew. The string on the stick was to fish with. When the man pulled the string out of the water, there was a big fish on the hook. George saw the man pull one fish after another out of the lake till he had all the fish he wanted. What fun it must be to fish! George wanted to fish too. He had his string. All he needed was a stick, and he knew where to get that. George ran home as fast as he could. In the kitchen he took the mop off the kitchen wall. The mop would make a good stick. Now George had the string and the stick. He was all set to fish. Or was he? Not yet. George had to have a hook, and on the hook something that fish liked to eat. Fish would like cake and George knew where to find some. But where could he get a hook? Why, there was a hook for the mop on the kitchen wall. It would have to come out. With the hook on the string and the string on the stick and the cake in the box in his hand, George went back to the lake. George sat down, put some cake on the hook, and let the line down into the water. Now he had to wait, just as the man had waited. George was curious. The fish were curious, too. All kinds of fish came to look at the line. Big fish and little fish, fat fish and thin fish, red fish and yellow fish and blue fish. One of them was near the hook. The cake was just what he wanted. George sat and waited. Then the line shook. There must be a fish on the hook. George pulled the line up. The cake was gone, but no fish was on the hook. Too bad. George put more cake on the hook. Maybe this time he would get a fish. But no. The fish just took the cake off the hook and went away. Well, if George could not get the fish, the fish would not get the cake. George would eat it. He liked cake, too. He would find another way to get a fish. George looked into the water, that big red one there with the long tail. It was so near maybe he could get it with his hands. George got down as low as he could and put out his hand. Splash! Into the lake he went. The water was cold and wet and George was cold and wet too. This was no fun at all. When he came out of the water, Bill was there with his kite. My, you are wet, Bill said. I saw you fall in, so I came to help you get out. Too bad you did not get a fish, but it is good the fish did not get you. 
Now I can show you how high my kite can fly, Bill went on. Bill put his bike up near a tree, and then they ran off. There was a lot of wind that day, and that was just what they needed. The wind took the kite up fast. George was too little to hold it in this wind. A kite that big could fly away from him, so Bill had to hold it. George saw the kite go up and up and up. What fun it was to fly a kite. They let the kite fly for a long time till Bill said, I will get the kite down now. I must go home and you should too. But when Bill pulled the string in, the kite got into the top of a high tree. Bill could not get it down. Oh, my new fine kite. I cannot let go of it. I must have it back, Bill said. But the tree is too high for me. But no tree was too high for George. He went up to the top in no time. Then little by little he got the string out of the tree. Down he came with the kite and gave it back to Bill. Thank you, George. Thanks a lot, Bill said. I am so happy to have the kite back. Now you may have a ride home on my bike. I will run back to the lake and get it. You wait here for me with the kite but do not let it fly away. George looked at the kite. Then he took the string in his hand. He knew he could not fly the kite in this wind, but maybe he could let it go up just a little bit. George was curious. He let the string go a little, and then a little more, and then a little more, and then a little more. When Bill came back, there was no kite and there was no George. George! he called. Where are you? Then he looked up. There they were, way up in the sky. Bill had to get help fast. He would go to the man with the yellow hat. The man would know what to do. George is not here, said the man with the yellow hat when Bill came. Have you seen him? George and my kite are up in the sky near the lake, Bill shouted. I came to... But the man did not wait to hear any more. He ran to his car and jumped in. I will get him back, he said. I must get George back. All this time the wind took the kite up and George with it. It was fun to fly about in the sky, but when George looked down the fun was gone. He was up so high that all the big houses looked as little as bunny houses. George did not like it a bit. He wanted to get down. But how? Not even a monkey can jump from the sky. George was scared. What if he never got back? Maybe he would fly on and on and on. Oh, he would never, never be so curious again if just this one time he could find a way to get back home. What was that? George could hear something. And then he saw something fly in the sky just like a kite. It was a helicopter, and in the helicopter, hurrah, was the man with the yellow hat. Down from the helicopter came a long line. George got a hold of it, and the man with the yellow hat pulled him up. George held on to the kite, for he had to give it back to Bill. I am so happy to have you back, George said the man with the yellow hat. I was scared, and you must have been scared too. I know you will not want to fly a kite again for a long, long time. You must give it back to Bill when we get home. Hurrah! Bill shouted when George came to give him the kite. George is back, and my kite is back too. And then Bill took George by the hand and went with him into the little garden and from the little garden into the big garden, where the bunny house was. This is one of my baby bunnies, Bill said. Take it, it is for you. A baby bunny for George. George took it in his hands and held it way up. It was his bunny now. He would take it home with him. And that is what he did. <laughs> <laughs>